Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brad, Supercoach Pro. Today we're doing a round 14 Supercoach team review. Oh, man. Um, so another back-to-back -back stinker. It's fine. Um, I'm just going to be positive because no point being like a season over and being a negative Nancy where you see people get too serious about this sometimes. Um, you know, one move doesn't define your season, but this move is actually quite funny. So, look, if you don't laugh, you cry. Not that I'll ever cry about Supercoach, but... Season rank is now 11,000, so we pushed back out. We, we were 5,002 ECO, and uh, how things can change into buyers. So, <laughs> 18, 22, pretty poor. Um, but I did upgrade, and I've only got one more upgrade to go. So, I think we're in an okay spot. Uh, seven trades, one upgrade. So, we're going to have five trades left, of course, with a fully upgraded side. Stuart's a fake primo, but he's probably my equivalent to, you know, someone's F6. I'll just write it like that, I suppose, if that makes sense to you guys. But... Look, I didn't get to watch too, too much footy. I did have my um, son with me, so um, if I am limited with knowledge, I'll just skip some players. But I thought I'd try the VC on Ryan on that game and just didn't proceed how I thought it would with his scoring output. So I didn't actually think there would be a reason to throw a C anywhere. So 79, what did he end up doing at the end? Um, I didn't see a lot of this game, to be completely honest, but... If you look at your season stats, you can actually see, you go fantasy stats, and it'll actually give you his details. And this is only if you pay for Supercoach Gold. So, okay, that's really poor. So he only had 14 disposals as opposed to those 20s that he normally has. His marks were in a single digit. So that explains that 79 score from Ryan. The one week you try to captain him too, or VC him, is just insane. Like, you look from here on, 106, 197, 111, 122, 132, 124. VC him, bang, 79. So what do you do? Dacos, I know you guys probably think it, that should have been the obvious one, but Shields tags from North Melbourne. Um, and look, Dacos came off with those shin issues, or shin issue um, the week before. So I kind of thought if Collingwood are up at 50 points at half time that he might get rested um, before his buy. And that didn't happen. So that really backfired for me. So 129, uh, yeah, Captain Obvious it should have been, but it is what it is. Sheasel, he's probably a safe guy to now chuck a C on. He probably has been for a while, to be honest, but 160 average. So a 120 from him is fantastic again. And then oh, Houston, like, been screaming for this kind of score. And if you bought him in this week, well done to you. Because before that, his three round average is pretty poor, to be honest. Like, I've, what's he done? So he had that big 148. Before that, it was 77, 98, nothing to go home about. But, yeah, you need these big scores in the buy rounds, so that's probably why I didn't drop too badly. Um, he's probably one for the picking now. He's probably reset his break even, I'd say. So don't have Houston. He's probably the one you want to target because he'll go up another 20K, go back to 600,000 if he goes 111. And then Young, um, yeah, well, I can't really comment on this game. I didn't see much of it. So it's pretty disappointing. I know he was meant to be going to Bont and tagging him, so that threw me off the VC for Bont. Um, like apparently it wasn't even meant to get up for that game and he played the game of his life again. So, yeah, disappointing shit out there. And then Fisher, 70, 71 for Fisher. Oh, mate, this is <laughs> killing me. Me and Steve did the same thing. I'm not sure if Steve's done his round review yet, but um, I hope I haven't spoiled anything. But my, my review will come out tonight anyway, so hopefully he's done his by then. But <laughs> look at this. His four round scores, 140, 116, 113, 120. So you're thinking, oh, yeah, safe bet. Collingwood will make huge points to defenders, especially designated kickers. <laughs> Goes 71. Boy, had like 32 or 38 points at quarter time. So I thought, you beauty, I don't have to watch this game. You can just, you know, hang out with the ball boy. And then uh, I look at the end of the day and he's done a 71. I'm like, I heard he didn't kick, kick a clutch goal at the end of the game too to, to win it for him. So that could have been like a 30-point scaling in that. So... <laughs> Oh, never again for Fisher. It looks like, honestly, I know it sounds really obvious, but it looks like just Bont, Dacos and Gorn for the rest of the season. Nothing nothing extra spicy. And uh, maybe you try to be too cute by thinking a guy is too safe. But it's his first poor score in like over a month. Um, he's got the role. Like the role's Bruce Free sitting, chipping around footy. And who would have known that North Melbourne would have given him a run for the money, you know, before half time. So... It's his worst score since round six if you don't take the sub game. Like, it, he's had a pretty consistent month there. So, anyway, it's whatever. And then Stuart comes back this week, who's honestly is my equivalent to your F6 up forward. So, 
Oh, what do you do? Um, Hawes got the injury symbol off him, so he must be ready to play this week. That's good to see. Richard's not sure. Uh, anyway, yeah, Bont, game of his life again. What did he do? 162. This guy's just a weapon. He is not really disappointed me this year. Fantasy stats, what do you do, Bont? He's just an absolute gun. Yeah, right. And he kicked three goals. Wow, again. His last three games, he's kicked eight goals. This guy's nuts. Oh, he'd be he'd be a shot between him and Heaney for the brown eye this year for sure. Sarong signed down a bit, so this is a little bit concerning for Sarong. Just, oh, he's got Richmond coming up, so that'll be all right. But yeah, it's gonna say three round average shot a little bit. How you going? So 91, 102, 96, not great from Sarong, but he's gonna be cheap for everyone that doesn't have an M eight. But pretty sure I've seen every team have an M eight probably in round seven or eight, like almost a month ago. I've seen people complete their midfields first. But is I'm gonna assume he copped a tag here because that's pretty poor from him. I saw him get the ball late, but yeah, he can produce these scores. So it would have been Butters for a C as well. He's the other guy I was looking at, and he hasn't scored well again. So that's two back-to-back -back poor scores for a primo mid. Rio didn't play, of course. Steele didn't play. Well, Steele may as well not play. Look at this. Look at this Steele. I've got too many fake primos. So I don't know where my ranking's gonna finish. To be completely honest with you guys, but. Um, Steele's another concern. Like, obviously that knee is affecting him. That's very clear now. In, in, in indication, just his scoring wise. Anyway, like he had a hot start here. Like one nineteen, one twenty, one twenty six, one forty two, one forty three. We haven't seen any of that. So, regardless of no strapping or strapping or whatever's going on with his knee, there's something hindering him here. Um, so he's probably a player I'm not going to pick next year for sure. Steele's off my never again. List, I think. Um, Tom Green, I knew that Hawthorne and Port would be these worst two matchups in his fixture coming up, and he's just getting poor disposal efficiency. So this has been a real kicker. I should have honestly went against the crowd, not went for value this time. And this is where value actually backfired, to be completely honest. He's actually scoring like a like a, a midfield rookie like uh, Sharp I had at the start of the season. So, yeah, uh, we're going to have to bring in Rosie. Because I think Rosie and Green might be whooped every week, but I knew these would be his toughest matchups. And then from here on out, he actually scores pretty well against the rest of the sides. Um, so yeah, huge concern of the Tom Green move. Definitely should have went LDU, and that's another hindsight thing. Um, <laughs> and then we got Miller and Oliver. So yeah, look, there's no one confident I can chuck a C on Bar Bond when you're going that midfield. I don't feel safe with anyone. Um, I wish this is where. I Probably wish I had a merit. Um, people running a Walsh as well, but Bont is probably your safe man. Apart from that Marvel game, 73 against Essen, which I don't know what happened there. He's been pretty good. Um, yeah, okay. So this side's got a little bit of work to do. We've not a lot of trades, which is majority of the same boat. But Miller and Oliver, hopefully Miller doesn't get another tag. But it looks like the tag is back too. Like the, the tag's been back for a few weeks now, and it seems like most teams are running with one, so it's really ruining our super coach sides. Cherry, I brought in over Grundy, huge miss, but I would have had to do an extra trade to bring in Grady at uh, Grundy, and that would have been grabbing Kruger, um, or St. Binger. I uh, would have had to grab Kruger this week, and I didn't want to do a third trade for a one upgrade on Grundy, but maybe that might have been the play too, but it would have left me with six trades which I wouldn't have been as confident with. Um, and then Jackson, underrated pick. He's been probably the most hated pick by people that don't actually own him. But mine, yeah, he's been actually fantastic as a super coach forward. Forward, you know. Um, look, there's not a lot of tons in there. I can clearly see that. But he's still got a lot of 90s and high 80s in there. So anyone that ever doubted him, how many tons has he got? Yeah, he's got four. I get that. 90, 90, 90. A few 90s, but... He's only got three scores under 80, and he's been a great cover for um, my R3, you know, slash R2 options all year, buying some cash gals in the ruck. So he's been a perfect swing man. So I get Gorn back this week, which is nice, and then Flanders to come back, which is helpful. So I think I had – how many primos out there I have? I think I had one more than most when I looked at teams, majority of – I don't know if you even call Stuart a primo. It's probably not a, stu a primo anymore, but – I definitely feel like I had one too many primos missing this week compared to the other sides. So next year, I think I'll look at 
maybe having a heavier round 15 side um, and even the round 12 and not doing what I did the opposite of uh, tactically because it looks like my ranking has slid down quite a fair bit from loading up on too many Port and Frio players and then same with the round 14 pick as well with the Gold Coast players coming in. Um, I think Miller's on my never again list as well. So there's a few players on my never again after this season after watching him pretty closely. And then Heaney, 141, finally a bigger score from what I've seen of late anyway with Heaney. Um, what's he been doing? I feel like he hasn't done a, a 140 in, in like six weeks at least. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, his last 120, he's only had two of them. So well done if you're through to see on him because he hasn't produced anything like that since round four. Um, he's absolutely re- regressed. So, yeah, I mean, he's always an X-Factor player, um, but I feel like Warner and players like that have been stealing points. I wasn't saying that. I'm pretty sure Warner had a stinker. Kerno comes back, so hopefully he stops doing back-to-back 80s and does something for me. And then <laughs> Sanders. Oh, you can give me hate for this in the comments. I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of hate for the Fisher thing and, and even bringing in Sanders. But when I wasn't going to bring in Sanders, I was going to bring in Wilson, that 117K defender forward rookie who got injured. So... Instead, I got a couple of 50 scores, which were included in my best 22. <laughs> and he made... How much did he actually make over those two weeks? At worst case scenario, he made me... Put him for 289. Made me, like, close to 40K. So that's the worst case scenario with Sanders, I suppose, and a couple of 50s there. Absolute worst trade of the year. Sanders, uh, I'll put my hand up for that. And then the Fisher captain. That's my first captain under 100. Um, I'm pretty certain this season. So, uh, what do you do? Revel, he's been good, uh, but not fantastic this week, obviously, when I needed him. And, and then Dowling, I had to pick him. He wasn't sub. So, Richards probably comes back in the next week or two. Uh, Optimise the side is always an easier way to look at what your side is going into the week. So, who do I got missing? I've got two up forward missing in Colonel and Sanders. I've got a whole back line. <sighs> yeah, okay. Um, Rogers isn't playing, so I don't know. That's a bit of a catfish there. So if that's three not playing. Surely I thought there was a fourth not playing here. Am I going blind or what? No, no. Okay. Well, I technically don't need to make any trades, but what I think I will do is something like this. Now, I kind of need a DPP, but... Garcia might have to go um, and hope Hudgens or however you say it, that Jack bloke from West Coast that was in the Collingwood VFL side, the 100K rookie, because this is where you want your downgrades to be cheap now. Like, you don't care if they're going to play. Um, I've got enough DPP in the side to do some stuff if I'm really desperate. So 449 for my last upgrade in my forward line is basically what I'm looking at. Um. I think I'm just going to go to the pod route too because, like, I bought in a Kerno. I bought in a couple of players that have been pod-like and I just want to do something different. It would have been more exciting in the year. So could go Mackay. I mean, I've loved Mackay all season and then that 60-60 pulls out. Didn't give me a world of confidence. Um, what's Mackay got? <sighs> Break even of 81. Plays the Cats. And he's got a Richmond after that. Are you kidding me? Got a good fixture, doesn't he? Geelong, Richmond, Giants, Dogs, North, Port. So what's he been producing of late anyway? 100s, 90s, and 60s. Maybe Jeremy Cameron's the boy. Grind Wise is an interesting one too, actually. Could I go there? Because what's Cameron doing? 50, 76, 60, 91, 96. I know Myers had a poor score or two, and he could come down in price, but break him 139. Do you wait one more week, Brad? Do you do it and just see one more game out of him? Because prior to that stinker, he was actually a good pick. Like, look at his scoring here. Before that, he was averaging 93. So he's got 86, 81, 125, 77, 96, 119, 71, 37 against Richmond. Don't know what happened there. And 72. So maybe I'll just do one trade and wait for the fallen, fallen Primo to come down. Or I could grab... Do I grab Rosie this week, potentially? 
And I think he can come down to price too. He's got a huge break even again. Maybe I don't pull the trigger this week. Um, what can I do in the back line? Do I need a spare? Because I, I, potentially I'd probably want to field uh, Fisher up forward, FYI, because he can't stay there. But can I grab a spare in the back line? Damn it, I'm like 4K short of Stephen May. Anyway, I don't really know what my trade plans will be, in all honesty. Um, well done to anyone who went Ari early. Hopefully Nass doesn't take his spot. But, yeah, I honestly don't know what I'll do with my side. Uh, potentially might just hold off for the week, especially if I don't need to trade, I suppose. But it would be nice grabbing in a primo now, although... Jeremy Cameron against Carlton, we we wither and give him a bath. I'm not too sure because um, I'm actually okay for the round. I might wait a week, see how we go. I'm not really 100% certain. I'd love a mid-season rookie to come flying past that someone with a good score on the field because Hutchinson as a pick doesn't give me a great confidence that he's going to score more than 40 each week. And he's not DPP, so it doesn't really help. Um, Now, looking at the players in the midfield, what have we actually what have we missed so not total points this is fine whatever but if you're the sideways midfielders who would you actually look at so mids i feel like every mid is pulled out stinkers now okay now if this allows me to okay so i've got the main guys anyway but they're dpp players as well right so merit ah oh man you've got to grab chore surely Sure, you just pick Chaw now and just hope he does well. Neil got tagged, so that was probably a call we all saw happening. Walsh has been underwhelming. So there's been no clear midfielders in all honesty, though. Crouch is done for the year. Dunkley underperformed. Errol, 106, not amazing, but he scored better than the others. LDU was definitely the shout. I said this two weeks ago, and I don't know why I didn't go there myself, but I, I just wanted to play the value game so I could get an upgrade quicker. So I should have played the long game and not worried about upgrade quicker, considering my team's almost finished. Chad Warner, I did warn people about a fortnight ago that not to pay top dollar for this man. And what's he done the last two? Um, I, I said this on my live, and I had a bit of a his fit about it. 98 and 64, did think it was a point chasing purple patch here, and he's, he's produced what I thought he would. So this is what I mean. They all have their patches. Um but if I was a sideways, <clears throat> like a, a Tom Green and whatnot, there's no one even in that price range. You'd have to pay up for maybe a Gordon. Um, couldn't do an Noah Anderson type thing. Laird, maybe his time on ground, he's gone to halfback flank. That could be interesting enough to buy, potentially. What's his break even? So I think to win Supergates, you've probably got to play aggressive at this point. So <clears throat> I need one upgrade. So maybe... Maybe get the one upgrade then, have five trades and then trade out two primos being Oliver and Stewart potentially, but give them a week. See how they do this week and do something fancy with that. So I think I'll leave the video there because now I'm just sort of rambling. VC and C, I'm, I'm honestly not sure. Um, oh, Essendon and Fremantle. Um, I don't trust Butters now. I've lost confidence with Butters because Barry might tag him. I'm not going anywhere near green. Heaney, what's Heaney's scoring been like against Giants? He's in form again. He's had that week off well, and played now. Okay, hasn't been amazing, Heaney. I think we just have to VC gone then. VC gone and then do we trust Sarong on Ryan? Surely Ryan has a bounce back game. He can't have played two bad games in a row. What's he done recently? 93. Oh, he's put me off, hasn't he? Ah, let's just hope that Gorn goes nuts in the VC and we don't have to worry about that last game. Maybe so wrong. Don't know. Or you go Heaney into Gorn, I suppose, as well. I'm really uncertain. If you guys got any ideas, you know, chuck them in the comments. Got any trade plans, chuck them in the comments. I did get to, I'm pretty sure all of them when you, when you chuck them in anyway. So, and don't forget to give us a like and a sub. Um, the subs are probably handy when I'd go live streaming and stuff and you want to uh, talk some questions and whatever else. Um, 
So we did a round review there. And it did poorly. I know that. Shouldn't have captained Fisher, and I won't be captaining or VCing Fisher ever again. End of the video. I'll catch you later. Hopefully you guys scored well. Let us know what you scored in the comments.